So here we go. Uh, last video here. And yeah, this is an example if the over under applied over factory overhead is materially significant. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different than the one we just looked at. Let's just go ahead and take a look over here. Okay, so assume that Lobo Inc. had 400 of applied overhead for the month of June 2024. LI had the following balances. Okay, so let's think about this. So the first thing I need to go through and do is, is the amount of overapplied factory overhead materially significant. So overapplied factory overhead, and I'm just gonna change this right over here because I can. Let's just change this over here to 200. So my overapplied factory overhead is 200. My cost of goods is 400. So this amount over here is going to be materially significant, right? So the amount is materially significant. Therefore, we made the adjustment to cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold would be distorted. Therefore, we need, we need to, we, we, we need to allocate the over applied factory overhead to whip finished goods inventory and cost of goods sold. Remember from the last video, we do not do anything with raw materials. It is there to trick you. Okay, so let's talk about factory overhead. And remember, we have actual, and then we have applied. So if my applied was 600 and my actual was 400, again, I'm just making this up, right? What happens? Okay, so over here, my applied 600, my actual is 400. In this particular case, I've got my applied is greater than my actual by 200. I over applied factory overhead, right? So in order to make this account go to zero, right? I'm gonna have to debit factory overhead for 200, okay? Again, I'm just making these numbers up, but I think it's a better way to visualize it, right? This has to go to zero. So I know that I'm gonna have to debit factory overhead for 200. Now, when it comes to the other accounts, what I'm gonna to need to go through and to do is I need to make an allocation. So over here, what I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna have my whip, finished goods and cost of goods sold. So my total over here is gonna be 150, 250 and 400. So my percentage of total Right, so over here, this is gonna to total up to be 800. This is gonna be 150 divided by 800 or 18.75. This is gonna be 250 divided by uh, 800 or 31%. This is gonna be 400 divided by 800 or 50. So this is 150 divided by 800, 250 divided by 400. It's gonna be 250 divided by 800, 400 divided by 800. So this is my percentage of my total. My over applied factory overhead is 200. So I'm going to multiply my percentage of total by my over applied factory overhead, and this is going to give me my allocation. Okay, so right over here, this is going to be 18.75% times 200. Over here, 62.5 and then 100. So my total allocation is going to be over here. So when I do the journal entry, I'm gonna go ahead and credit WIP, credit finished goods, credit cost of goods sold. Give myself a little bit more room. So right over here, I've got 37.5, 62.5 and 100. So this would be on what date? 6.30, 24. 
and this is going to be to adjust for over applied. Factory overhead. Again, this is going to be if it is materially significant. How do we determine if it's materially significant? We divide the amount by cost of goods sold. If it's not material, I take it directly to cost of goods sold. But if it is material, I divide it by cost of goods sold. What is material? Sometimes 5%, but again, it's really going to depend on who you talk to and the particular situation. So that wraps up job order costing, right? The only thing I didn't really cover is establishing overhead rates. However, what I'm planning on doing is when I do look at a single plant wide departmental and activity based costing, I will go back through and go through some of those questions for you. If you have any questions, please feel free, please, uh, please, please feel free to leave them below. Appreciate you subscribing to the channel and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great one.